Good morning, everybody. Okay, that was about half. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Okay, we got good testimony. We're gonna praise the Lord this morning. We're gonna draw near God. Would you just bow your heads with me, Father? We just thank you for this place where we can worship you freely, Lord. We want to draw near to you. We want to feel your spirit this morning, Father. Let our praises be acceptable to you as we sing and praise and draw near to you, Father. We just love you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. The church says, Amen. Amen. Okay, our God is a great big God. Yeah, one, two, three, four.
you picture the eagles flying high in the sky, and then you picture the depth of the submarine. How low, how high, how awesome God is that he covers the span of everything. So no matter where we are, we can be in God's presence because he's with us every day. He's in Praises go to our God. Every every.
Let's stand together and tell somebody every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Good morning, Walk the Church family. I'm Pastor Brian. Glad you chose to worship us on this rainy uh, Sunday morning. Now the sun's coming out. It's beautiful outside. Uh, morning offering, tithes and offerings. Uh, there's a box on the back wall. You can make a donation in that for your tithes and offerings, or you can do it on the church website on the donate tab of WFM Church, or through your banking institution, financial institution, whatever it is. Uh, you can set that up or mail in check. Anyways, uh, Sunday school, Sunday morning at 9.30 uh, for all ages. Join us. Uh, something for everyone. Learning about God. Studying the Word of God. Um, this week, Thursday night, pickleball. Thursday night, pickleball, 6 o'clock. Next week, following week, not this week, but the following week, we're going to move it to Tuesday night. We'll switch over to Tuesday night. Uh, but this week, Thursday night, pickleball, 6 o'clock. Following week, we're going to start on Thursday night. In your bulletin, you should have received a little flyer. Have one. Like this. Little flyer in your bulletin. Uh, we are collecting some uh, goods to ship off to some missionaries that are doing missionary work in Jackson. They, they take old t-shirts and all kinds of stuff and they make uh, different things out of them and uh, do incredible work and it helps out in many different ways. You can read all about it. If you have any questions, see Mr. Verdana. Raise your hand, Mr. Verdana, Mr. Verdana. See Mr. Verdana, she can help you with that. If you have questions about that, we'll collect them for a couple weeks and then we'll ship those off and uh, probably do it again in spring as well. So that is out there. Coming up next Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, um, I want to do a special prayer time. I felt like my mic fell off. I want to do a special prayer time for past, or past, wow, man. For past, for past, yeah, pray for past. No, that's in October. Anyways, uh, next Sunday morning, I want to do a special prayer time for people that work in the schools. I don't care if you work as a cross uh, safety uh, officer or a principal or in the cafeteria or in the principal or superintendent or on the school board or a coach. If you are connected with staff, with some way, secretary, whatever it is in the school, I want to have a special prayer time next Sunday morning as school gets ready to start off for many different uh, uh, communities around that we represent. Everything from Riverside, Miss Principal is here from Riverside, uh, to Grace Christian, to Water Lake, to Coloma, uh, all kinds of people helping out and working at school. So I want to do that. And then next Sunday afternoon at four o'clock, we're going to do a prayer walk. I have a, a little handout sheet I'll have for you. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to meet at Waterbury High School at 4 o'clock, and we'll disperse from there. So if you want to go to Hartford or to Grace or to Cloma or to Riverside or whatever, we'll have a prayer time together. Other churches are going to join us 4 o'clock at Waterbury High School, and then send off. If you want to go to the middle school, the elementary school, whatever, you can do that. But we're going to meet at 4 o'clock and take off from there, and I have a, a great prayer walk sheet for you to do uh, next Sunday morning, or next Sunday, 4 o'clock at the high school. Let's do our memory verse together. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and then address myself to him. John 14, 21.
Vince is having a couple surgeries this week and facing probably some other surgeries down the road. And I thought it'd be just uh, appropriate um, to pray for him. But I wanted you to see his face. So you know what you're praying for. Pray God to do some amazing things. Let's pray. Father, you are above all. You are a way maker when we don't see the way. You know how to handle every situation we face. From surgeries, to procedures, to radiation, to chemo, to all kinds of things, Father. And this week, I pray that you give the doctors, as they do surgery, give mom and dad, but Father, above all, that this little guy someday will grow into a godly young boy and a godly young man and become a godly husband. Whether he's a doctor, lawyer, or Indian chief, that he would grow up loving you, serving you, realizing that you are a great big God, higher than a skyscraper, bigger and deeper than a submarine. So, Father, we pray for something amazing to happen in the days ahead in this young man's life. Be it mom and dad. Be it those that are others that are facing procedures. And I think of Neil. He's facing radiation again this week after a painful week last week. Father, that you could do the amazing things that only you can do. That you'd make a way when there is no way. that we would turn to you in our time of trouble, in every situation, because we love you and we trust you, and you are God above all gods, and we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. He is a great maker, and we worship him.
worship you this morning. We thank you that you are the way maker. When we don't see it, when we don't understand it, in the midst of our trouble and struggles and situations of life, oftentimes we don't understand it. We don't see it. We don't see that you're working, but you are the way maker, the promise keeper, light in the darkness. That's who you are. So, Father, we pray that we would realize that today. We would get a glimpse of how big you are, how awesome you are, and trust you with our lives every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The children can be dismissed for junior church. We've been working through a discussion about what a disciple of Jesus is. So it's in the bulletin printed and on the screen as well. Let's say it together. A disciple of Jesus is a learner learning to love like Jesus, walk like Jesus, live like Jesus, and be like Jesus. How you doing? At being like Jesus. How are you doing learning? Last week we talked about learning as a disciple. We learned to obey. Uh, the scripture was, if, if you love me, you obey my commands. Uh, that's true love is obedience. Keeping God's commands is evidence, is proof of our love for the Father. Loving him. Whether it's in black and white, we read it in the Bible, or the Holy Spirit speaks to us and directs us and guides us in our life. How are you doing at obeying God's commands? How are you doing that? Today we're going to talk about knowing Christ. Everyone would say, I know God, or I know Jesus, or I know the Holy Spirit. We're talking about God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to talk about God today in that fashion, in that form. Uh, but everyone would say they know God in some fashion or some form. I know God, or at least know something about God. Um, but do we really realize how big <laughs> God is? We just sang some songs that talked about the glorious span of God. Higher than a skyscraper, lower than a submarine. Uh, indescribable is another word we use when we talk about God. Just huge. God is so big and so huge. And there's some words that describe God. And I'm going to kind of run through them as, as just a reference point. But we're going to come down to, is God big enough? To handle your situation. No matter how small it is or how big it is, is God big enough to handle your situation? And the answer is yes, but I want to show it to you so you understand it, so you can trust God along the way. Do you know God is a sovereign God? God is a sovereign God. God, the word sovereign means chief, highest, or supreme. When you say God is sovereign, you're saying that he's number one of the universe. He is the ruler, the sovereign Lord God. He is the sovereign God. He is in control. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. And there's all kinds of scriptures. Uh, uh, Psalm says it this way. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. The kingdom rule over all. Uh, the heavens proclaim the glory of the of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. A Roman says, but you are mere humans. Who would talk back? Should the form, the one that's being formed talk back to the maker? Doesn't the potter have the right to make out of the same lump, lump of clay something special or something for common? Revelations 19 says, on his robe down his thigh, it said, King of kings and Lord of lords, do you know that God is a sovereign God? Number one ruler over all of us, over everything, not just parts and pieces, but everything. Do you know that God is eternal? There is no beginning or no end. Even the, uh, uh, the Darwin people and the evolution side of teaching evolution, they come up with it happened like this and there was a big bang and this happened and this happened and this happened. And the question I always ask is, where did air come from to start all this? It was just there. God was in the beginning. There's no beginning 
There's no end. God was there. It was God that created the air. It was God that formed the earth. It was God, the eternal God. He has no end time, no expiration date. Like the stuff you throw out of your refrigerator when it gets old. God is not bound by time like we are. I know the date I was born, and the date I'm going to die is coming, right? There's a time. But with God, there is no time. He was in the beginning before the beginning. He sees the past and he sees the future as well. He knows what's best for me before I ever get to that issue and problem in life. He knows. And when I know that God is eternal and he knows all that about me, I can trust him. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on my understanding, but his. And he'll guide you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Isaiah says, uh, the king redeemer, he says it this way, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no other God, he tells us. 1 Timothy, now the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honored and glory forever and ever. Amen. Revelations 1 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. No time, no beginning, no end. He is eternal. If God is eternal and we know him as a internal, eternal God, then how does that affect my life? Because he knows what's coming tomorrow. What about God omniscient? The, the God who possesses all knowledge knows everything about me. Nothing is a surprise. The surgery, the surgery that Vance is having uh, this week is not a surprise to God. God knew he was gonna have it. He even knew what day it was. God knows. He knows all about me, how I feel, what I think, my heart's desire. He knows my past and he still loves me. He knows what's waiting for me. I have a future and a hope that he's waiting for me because I'm a new creation in Christ. Even though I've done all that bad stuff in the past, he has created me a new creature in Christ. I am new again. He knows my failures and he still loves me. He knows all about me. Isaiah 40 says, it, Who measures the water in the hollow of his hands or the breadth of his hands mark off the heavens? Who held the dust of earth in a basket or weighed it on the mountain scale of the hills of balance? Hebrews 4 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered, laid bare and before him. 1 John 3, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything, even our innermost beings. Doesn't it say that he knitted us together in our mother's womb before we even were born? He knew all about me. He even knows the number of hairs on my head. I help him so he doesn't have to count so often. He knows. And if we know that God knows everything and nothing surprises him, how does that affect us today? He knows. He knows everything. It's not a surprise. God is omnipresent. Omnipresent meaning that he is infinite everywhere, present at all times in all spaces. What is a good time to praise the Lord? Every time, every praise, all the time. Whether we want to or we don't, we're ready. He's ready for us. God is everywhere. It's foolish to think that we can hide from God. Just think about it. There's characters in the Bible thought they could hide from God. Right from the beginning, Adam and Eve, after they sinned, what did they do? They tried to hide from God. And he walks out, well, where are you? I know where you're at. You just come out and admit it. Jonah, we talked about last week. Jonah, he tried to hide from God by jumping on a ship and going to a different city instead of going to Nineveh. And God caused the storm. And you know the story. Uh, God knows. He knows. He's everywhere. And if God is everywhere, he's with us. 
the world is not. He's with us. Isaiah says it like this, that this is the Lord your God. Heavens is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Get that word picture in your mind. Heavens is my throne and the earth is where I put my foot. That's my footstool. God is everywhere. Bigger than we can imagine. Jeremiah, who can hide from the secret place? No one can, declares the Lord. Do I, not, do I not fill the heavens and the earth, declares the Lord? Acts said, he's not far from me. He's with us everywhere. I can't see the air, but I know the air is there because I feel it going into my lungs, right? I don't see the air, but when I go outside in a hurricane or a strong wind, I see the effects of the wind and the air. You'd say, that's fine. I mean, before there was ever technology, and people would say, well, God is everywhere. And they'd say, well, how can that be possible? We have the internet. You can grab your phone and come up. You can get 4G or 5G or, or Wi-Fi or something. I don't see it. But I look at my phone and it's there. God is everywhere. And if we can create a technology that is everywhere, don't you think God can be everywhere too? Come on. Yes, 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 and yes. He's not far from us. And here's the amazing part. He's just waiting for us to connect with him. Just like the internet. He's just waiting for us to connect with him. And you know what the password is? Ready? Jesus. That's the password. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Forgive me for what I've done. Come in to my heart. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hear my voice, I will come in and dine with him, and he with me is available, waiting for us to come in. Don't you find comfort knowing that he's everywhere? Whether I'm in the woods or in the city, whether I'm at home or at church, wherever I'm at, he is with me. And the other flip side of that is if you don't have Jesus in your heart, I'd be terrified. I'd be fearful because the truth is God is everywhere. And if you think you can go off into the corner and commit your sin and do whatever you want and say no one's noticed, you're wrong. God saw. He saw. He saw. God is omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. He has enough strength, enough power to do any and everything because he's all powerful. He can keep a believer from all danger. He is more than able to do whatever we can think or imagine. Matter of fact, he's so all powerful that our salvation is built on the power of God. Of Romans 1, for I'm not ashamed of the good news of the gospel. It has the power of God to work in our hearts and life. It is the power of God that comes into our hearts and life. It is the power of God. It, uh, throughout the Bible, Paul talks about it, that the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. The power of God. The power of God we see in creation in Genesis 1. The power to preserve all things, to sustain all things through his mighty power. Hebrews uh, verse, chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, 1 Peter 5. Uh, give all your worries and cares to God because he cares for you. God can handle. God has enough bandwidth, enough power to handle every situation we face. Every situation. I don't care if it's I broke my nail or I have a flat tire, or my little boy's having surgery, or my marriage is a disaster, or I'm losing my job, or I just blew it really bad. I need forgiveness. God can handle all our situations. Psalms 147, great are you, Lord, mighty in power, his understanding has no limits. There is no limit. You can't overload God. You just keep coming and coming. Uh, Ephesians, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. I love that, immeasurably more. I can get on my tape measure and measure how far that is. I can measure how far that is. I can measure that. I can get out of a wheel and walk and measure how far that is. Or I can get my car and drive and I can measure how 
many miles it was from here to there. But this says that God is able to do immeasurably more. I can't measure it. That's how much God can do. So when you're feeling down, you just got to realize that God can do immeasurably more. Uh, Philippians 3, uh, who has given us the power to establish in him everything under his control. He will transform our lowly bodies unto us glorious body as a weight for us. If God is all powerful, do you think he can handle your problem? Do you start to see? And God is innumerable. God never changes. This attribute of God never changes. The Bible is full of different places where God gave promise after promise after promise, and he fulfilled promise after promise after promise. He fulfilled them all. He keeps his word. He's trustworthy. Uh, Psalms 1, 102. But you remain the same. Your, ear, your years never change, never end. Hebrews 1, uh, but you, God, remain the same. Your, your years never end. Over and over again, you come at us. Keep going and us. Keep coming. In James 1, every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of heavens of life, who does not change like shifting sand. So often we live in a world that changes all the time. The rules change. This change, that change. I go home and I'm supposed to be home at 5 o'clock. And then, no, wait, Cindy's working in Kalamazoo, so I'm supposed to be home at 530. And no, wait, no, she has that day off, so she's going to be home early, so I should be home early. And then she has to get up early, so I have to go to bed early. And so it's, it's always changing. And so we think that's the way it is with everything, but it isn't with God. God's love endures forever and ever. He never changes. He never pulls back a promise and says, no, that ain't for you. Are you starting to see how awesome and how big God is? You see why I want to be a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? You see why I want him to be my father? Because oftentimes we go through life and there's all kinds of annoyances and things happen in our lives. And some of them are so small and stupid, we just kind of, yeah, whatever. And there's other things that are devastating and take the wind out of our sails and take our legs out from underneath us and we're flat on our back or flat in the hospital and we have nowhere else to turn and we turn to God finally we say, God, I need you. I need you. I need you in my life. See, he's big enough, strong enough, more powerful enough, more knowledge enough, more, more, more than enough. But so often we don't see the hand of God work instantly. And we wonder where it's gone. Maybe for guys. We don't see God change on a heartbeat. It doesn't happen. And somehow we forget God is in control. God is in control. And he knows what's best for me. And he knows what's best for you too. But do you trust him? Are you willing to give him your life? Your situation, whether it's a self-inflicted stupid thing you've done, or whether it's a passed on from generation to generation, or whether it's just a situation you got involved in, whatever it is, don't forget God is in control. And he knows what's best for you and for me and for all of us. We think about different times throughout the Bible. The man that was born blind we preached about a couple of weeks ago, the, the disciples are trying to figure out, blame who was at fault. And Jesus said, no, no, no. It was so that God might be glorified. The disciples were caught in the storm in the middle of the night. They didn't do anything wrong. They got caught in the storm. It happened. But God was with them. Uh, Saul, in his encounter, as he's going off to the road to Damascus to kill more Christians, he encounters Jesus. Something happens in his life. Lazarus, he was dead for over three days. But God was glorified in the midst of all those things. And when we go through troubles of life, so often we want to blame God. We want to blame someone else. We want to figure out why and all that kind of stuff. And we need to just step back and say, God, is this for your honor and glory? You got your hand in this. You know this is going on. You're not surprised by what this situation is in my life. You got it all figured out. God, I, I got to trust you. You are big enough. You are a sovereign God. You are a loving God. You are eternal God. You're omnipresent. You, you are innumerable. You are, you are God. You are God. And you love me. And you sent your son Jesus to die for me. See, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And whether you're 
a little boy getting surgery, God's got a plan and a purpose for us, isn't it? Or whether you're an old guy like me, God's got a plan and a purpose for his life. And he's preparing a place for us. But so often when trouble comes in our life, we like throw our hands up like, God, it's your fault. Those things happen. Do you know the Bible tells us we're going to have trouble? Does anybody, has anybody figured that out yet? Let me just give you a couple examples, just, just in case you missed it. Uh, Jesus is talking with the disciples. He's getting ready to go to the cross. And he says to them, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I've overcome the world. You're going to have many trials and many sorrows. But guess what? Take heart. I've overcome the world. But that's uh, John 16. Uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul says, goes, listen to this. I wish I would have read this before I got married. But those who marry will face troubles of all kinds of life. How come no pastor told me that before I got married? Now you got to read the context of that, but James chapter 5 If anyone among you are in trouble call the elders of the church together and pray and lay hands on them. Psalms 1, or Psalms 50 15, call to me in times of trouble. We're going to have trouble. But I know a God who is big enough Powerful enough, all knowledge, all present, all around. All, I know God who can handle my situation, my problem, anything that I face. But we have to come to the point where we surrender our life to God and say, God, I'm all in. I'm all yours. I trust you. I believe you can do it. I put my faith in you. And I'm going to hang on for the ride of my life. I'm going to hang on because you are more than able to handle whatever I'm facing. You, I have confidence in you. I trust in you. As a matter of fact, God, I want to get to the point where when that problem comes in my life, I want to start praising you now because I know the answer is already on the way. Because the day is a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is to a day. So God's already got the answer coming. He's already sending someone into our life. He's already bringing somebody around the corner. He's already bringing someone to care for you, to walk with you, encourage you, and carry you during these tough times of our life. He's already there. He's already there. And so I'm going to start praising God because he's got it already covered because he already knows what I need. Because he is a way maker. When I'm in trouble, he makes a way. Let's bow our heads. And I don't know what you're facing in life today, but God knows. And if you're facing something today that's bigger than you, whether it's a marriage or whether it's a physical thing or whether it's a school thing or a job thing or a family thing or a surgery thing, whatever it is, I want to invite you to just come and pray and tell God what your problem is, what your situation is, and then begin just to thank him that he's sending the answer already and start praising him for sending the answer. Who needs someone to be a way maker? <coughs> Needs God to be a way maker in your life, in your heart. Let's stand together. If you'd like to come and pray, I invite you to come and pray. God can handle your situation. He's a way maker.
give all honor glory unto God whether it's a big situation or little whatever trouble we face father thank you that you are more than able to handle what concerns me today and the days ahead father we are so grateful that you are the way maker in our lives in Jesus name amen before you leave tell somebody he's a way maker in your life as well